In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this pretty realistic pool table design using the iPad and Procreate. I'll walk you through every step of the way to create a really believable shallow depth of field. And of course, just like always, it's in real time. So no time lapse, no edits. If you want to follow along step by step and draw with me, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and draw a pool table scene. Starting out, I'm using a 3000 by 3000, 300 DPI canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out using the calligraphy set in Side Procreate, the mono line to start out with. This is a brush set and a brush that everybody that has Procreate already has. It's pre-installed. We're gonna switch over to the brush pen a little bit later. Then eventually I am gonna use a custom brush. It's one of my texture brushes, but I'll tell you all about that once we get to it. And for the color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made. So if you want to download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can download that for free by going to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, which I will also link that down in the description below. You can find that along with a video at the top, kind of walks you through how to install a palette in Procreate if you've never done it before. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out using the yellow color here, the first one. And like I said, using that monoline brush to begin with. And I'm just gonna draw an oval here, holding down with the Apple Pencil and then holding down with my other finger to lock it into a perfect circle. I'm gonna drag and drop the color in there. And then using the arrow here to transform, I can kind of move this around, selecting uniform here. I can resize or just kind of move it to get it where I want it to, to go. So there we go. That's gonna be the start of our design. So now I need to get that circle in the center of the other circle. So let's go ahead and slide this one to the left. We're going to select duplicate and then I'm going to grab a different color here. My color palette I've got this kind of off white color here. We'll use that drag and drop in there. And then once again, back up to our transform, the arrow, shrink this down. This is where the number is going to go inside of here. So once I get that set and I'm happy with it, go ahead and lock it in. Now let's go ahead and add that number. So I'm going to come back up to my color palette. I'm going to switch over to this kind of grayish black color. Then I'm going to go up to my wrench icon to the actions menu under the add tab. We're going to go to add text. Brings up our text here. Go ahead and highlight this. Flip my keyboard, change that to one. And then I'm gonna change my font. So we'll tap on the font here. And let's go ahead and go with Impact. I think Impact comes pre-installed with Procreate. Don't quote me on that. So if you have it, cool. If not, I can't really keep track of what I've installed and what comes with Procreate. So find something else if not. And we'll grab the arrow again to kind of move this around. I'm going to resize this, kind of get it centered here where I want it. And we'll lock that in. So we're off to a pretty good start. There we go, a pool ball. Now, obviously, it looks really flat. So this is where we're going to kind of add that three-dimensional quality to it. So let's do this. We're going to come up to our Layers menu again. I'm going to come down to Layer 1 with the yellow. And I'm going to make a new layer on top of here. And then I'm going to tap that and I'm going to set this as clipping mask. So with clipping mask, we can go ahead and paint or color on this layer. And it's only going to show up on the areas that are colored in on this layer underneath it. So if we're out here, nothing shows up only on this yellow. With that selected, then I'm going to come up here and switch my color. I've got this black color here first. We'll use that to start our shadow. Once again, still on the monoline brush. And I'm going to pull in kind of a crescent shape back here with that color. And get that shadow in here. Drag and drop to fill it in. Now we are going to blend this later. So you don't have to make sure that this is perfect and you know all the lines are super smooth. Doesn't matter. You can do it sloppy. That's what I'm going to do here. Back up to our color palette then, moving over to the right. We've got this kind of brownish orange. I'm going to use this. This is going to be kind of the biggest section of the shadow color. I'll throw that in there. Maybe 
maybe even pull it out a little bit more here. Next up, color palette again. We've got this kind of more burnt orange. Pull that into here. And that's about as far as I'm going with the shadows. Now we're gonna come back up to the color palette again. And I've got this kind of brighter yellow here. We're gonna pull this around to the front to start that highlight. And then finally, coming back up here again, we've got this almost white color here that will hit on the edge. Just like that. So that's what we're left with. Like I said, it looks pretty nasty right now. I even tried to make it really jagged just to illustrate how much this is gonna change things. So we're gonna go up here to our adjustments menu, and then we're gonna go to Gaussian Blur, grab that, Putting our Apple Pencil on the screen, we're gonna slide this to the right, and you're gonna see this is going to start to blend in. As ugly as that looked before, it looks pretty good now. From here, we can go ahead and grab our arrow if we want to kinda of slide this and adjust it. If it's maybe coming in too far, we can pull it back out a little bit. We can also go in here to the Layers menu, and selecting N for blend mode, we can bring down the opacity if we wanna adjust that too. If it's maybe too dark, we can slide that around to play around with it. So there we go, let's lock it in. That's what we're left with, so you can see now it's starting to have that 3D effect. But we're not done with the highlights yet, so let's go ahead now and add that kind of shine to the ball. So I'm gonna make another new layer here Tap that and set that as clipping mask as well. Starting out, we're gonna use that off-white color here. And we'll just go in, add a couple of kind of round dots there, or oblong ovals. And then we can go ahead, switching over to the white at the very end here, pulling our brush menu up and going to brush pen now can also come in here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. And kind of do some tapered lines around here. They're not coming up though because I did alpha lock this. And of course, these are two different ones. So we'll have to do this on another layer. So let's make a new layer here and pull this above. We'll do a little bit there. I'm gonna go even further up so we can go on top of this one now and do a little bit there. All right, so now let's blur this one. Go into adjustments, Gaussian blur here. Can blur that. And then also we can go back to our layer five here and blur these outer ones. Gaussian blur there and blurring those. And then pulling back out then, you can see what we're left with. We've got a kind of really realistic looking pool ball. So that's it for number one. We're gonna do three total balls, so let's move on to the next one. So for this, if you wanted to go ahead and repeat every single step that we just did, you could. Otherwise, we can also go in and do some duplicating layers to save some time. So that's what I'm gonna do for this. So I don't wanna duplicate all this up here. I just want to duplicate these two layers, which we can now merge together just by pinching them. Now, we can slide this to the left and duplicate that one. Then I'm gonna come down to the bottom one down here. Once again with the arrow, I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna shrink this down and move it up behind this one. So that's gonna be further up here in the background. I want it smaller than this one and up there to the side. Now. We'll go ahead and make this one the number two ball, and the number two ball is blue, so we need to change the color. So if we go up here to our color palette again, we're gonna go to the blue. And then when we drag and drop this, we need this on that base yellow color, as close as we can get. Now, you'll see this fills in perfectly. I'm gonna kinda pull in here a little bit closer so you can see. The shadow here is great. We use kinda that orangish brown, and because we have this with the color drop threshold turned up all the way, it makes that shadow match up with the value that we added to that color. If we don't have the color drop threshold turned up all the way, watch what's gonna happen. 
you're gonna see it's more of this muddy brown color. So if you're seeing that, it means that it's not turned up all the way. When you drag and drop the color, hold down this blue line up here, make sure it goes all the way to the right and it's gonna fill it in just like you want it to. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead, and get the circle in there, back up to our layers menu. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one to the left, and duplicate that one. We'll pull this down here underneath on top of the blue. Then with my arrow, I'm gonna grab and move it, and then of course shrink it down. I don't want it in the exact same spot though, so I'm gonna move it just a little bit so it doesn't look like it's the same ball in the same position from front to back there. Shrink this down a little bit more, get it set. All right, there we go. Like I said, this is number two, so we need to add that in. We'll go up to the color palette, switch over to that black gray again. We're gonna go back to our wrench and we're gonna go add text. Tap on this, or you can scribble and write it, but I always go to the keyboard. My handwriting's horrible and most of the time it doesn't take it, so. Hit two, lock that in, and then of course move it around. Get that set where we want it. And there we go. So now we're ready to go ahead and add those highlights. The reason why I didn't add and copy over the highlights is because I want to change those up from ball to ball just so it looks a little bit more realistic. If the highlights are exactly the same, it just looks super copy and pasted and mechanical. The shadows, not so much. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once again, we'll go ahead and do two separate ones for this one. Set this one as clipping mask here because we're going to kind of hit the outside and we don't want it to go outside of the shape. The color palette, we need that off-white color. Zoom back in here. This one I'm going to hit a little bit more. Need to move this down. It's on the wrong one. Clip to that one instead, so clip it to the blue. Hit this along the outside here. Maybe not as big. Pull that back a little bit. And then hit in a couple of circular ones there. Once again, Gaussian blur. Slide that so we can get the shine there that we want. Whoops. There we go. I think I might move that circle over though. It's getting really close to that line. And this is one of those things that you can go back and forth with if you notice that the blur is just doing too much and moving your things too close together. Might be a little trial and error. So once again, back to adjustments and Gaussian blur. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, so we've got that in there. Next up, let's do the inside part. So once again, coming above the two, new layer, white. We're not gonna set this as clipping mask because we're not gonna go outside of this. We can go ahead and get some highlights in here. Once again, back to adjustments and Gaussian blur. Let's slide that so we've got some highlights in there. I think I'm gonna just do one circle there instead of two. All right, there we go. So we've got that one done, two out of the way. Here now, as we move to the background, of course, the balls get smaller, further away from the viewer, but to do this shallow depth of field as we move further away from the viewer, then the balls are also going to blur more. So we're gonna go ahead and blur now. So we're gonna grab our layers menu again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch all these together. So now the blue number two, it's all on one. Now that's all on one, we can go ahead and go up to our adjustments menu, go to Gaussian blur again, and slide this one. So I'm thinking about 7% on this one looks pretty good. We want it to be blurred, but it's the one behind here, so we don't want too much of a blur. So there we go. Done with that one, now we're ready for the third and final ball. 
So once again, back up to our layers menu. If you wanted to make one from scratch, you can, but once again, we're just gonna copy and paste or duplicate. So slide to the left, duplicate. I'm gonna grab this one, pull it down to the bottom. Then once again, with my arrow, come up here, shrink this down. And I'm gonna use this one kind of as a guide. So I want this to be the same size, but since this one's gonna be further away now, I want it to be smaller than that. So I start out with the same size, just so I've kind of got a baseline of where to judge it from. So there we go, we've got that one. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit more. And then we need to recolor it. So this one will make number three solid, three is red. So we'll drag and drop our color in there. Once again, making sure we're in that utmost yellow section and then sliding it all the way to the right with the color drop threshold. Now we need the inner circle. So back up to our layers menu, slide this one to the left, duplicate that, drag it down on top of the red, back to the arrow, move this one up and over. Once again, I'm gonna kind of use this as a guide. So I'm gonna put it on top of the blue right now. So that's the same size there. So if we drop it down a little bit smaller, that's about right there. All right, ready for the number now. So back up to the color palette, gray, black, actions menu, add text, select this and number three. Then we can go ahead and move this around. Once again, totally up to you how you want to position it. We can, you know, make it funky to the side, however you want to do it. You can make it your own here and decide on the position. So we got the three there. Now, once again, we're ready to add in some of those extra highlights. So back up to our layers menu. I'm gonna come down to layer one, make a new layer. Tap it again to set it as clipping mask. Back up to my color palette. Back to the off-white color. Back to my brush. And we will go in. And get a nice highlight in here. Adjustments layer, or adjustments menu. Gaussian blur again. Slide that to the right. There we go, got a nice shine in there. And then once again, highlights in the center. So back up to our layers menu, selecting layer three, we'll make a new layer on top of that. Color palette, changing this back to the white. And I think I wanna move that three over just a tad bit. It looks a little funky there now that I'm closer into it. Oops. Let's move that just a little bit before we start, all right. Now with that layer selected and white selected, and go ahead and add in our shine there. Back up to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and sliding to the right. There we go. All right, so that one's done. Now it's time once again to add that depth of field. So we're gonna pinch all those together, but the blue, we kind of move that around. So let's get that one out of the way. Pinch those together. Now for layer one red, adjustments, Gaussian blur. I think we used, what, about seven or eight last time. So I'm gonna say probably nine for this one. Get it nice and blurred, maybe even 10 to bump it up. Eh, let's go nine. That looks pretty good. All right, so there we go. Now, all those are on their separate layers. I'm gonna go ahead and make the yellow ball its own separate layer by pinching together. And I'm gonna blur this one just ever so slightly. It just has a really hard line on the outside. I want this one to be in the foreground, so I'm not gonna go crazy with it, but maybe just like one or 2%. So going back to adjustments and Gaussian blur, I think 2% looks pretty good. So it takes a little bit of that hard edge off of it. 
All right, so we've got the three balls. Let's go ahead now and add in the pool table itself. So back up to our layers menu, new layer, drag and drop to the very bottom, back to my color palette, and I'm gonna choose this first green color, drag and drop that in there. Then I'm gonna come back up here to my arrow, I want to switch over to freeform now, so we'll get that. And let's pull this down to about there. So that's going to be the felt of the table itself, but now we need the rails there in the background. So back up to our layers menu again. I'm going to slide this one to the left and duplicate that one. Coming down here to the bottom one then, we're going to grab our color palette and switch to this darker green for the rail. Drag and drop. Then back up to our arrow again, freeform, pull this up for that rail. Then finally, we need that felt there on the top of the rail. So back up to our layers menu again, I'm gonna duplicate this top one. And then we'll drag and drop this one down below to the bottom, grabbing the arrow. I'm gonna pull this one up to about there. All right, now, of course, this is this rail here is the furthest away from the viewer. This is even behind the three, so it looks really weird right now because it is not blurred. It doesn't have any depth of field to it, so we're going to fix that now. We're going to come back up to our Layers menu. We're going to pinch all three of those green ones together. We're going to come up here to our Adjustments menu again. Gaussian Blur, probably about 13%, 14% to get that really nice and blurred there in the background. Yeah, maybe 12, 12 looks pretty good. All right, so we've got the rail in the background now. From here, let's go ahead and get a little bit more in the background up here. I'm gonna actually move this down just a tad bit. So back to our arrow here, we'll leave a little bit more room up there for the, the background. All right. So from here, let's go ahead, layers menu again, new layer drag and drop this one below. And we're gonna go ahead, go to our colors palette again, and we're gonna choose black right here. Fill that in with black. And then I'm gonna grab my color palette again and choose that darker brown that we used in the shadow section. And I'm gonna fill in about half, or a little bit more than half of that with that brown. Once that's filled in then, we're gonna go up to our adjustments menu again, Gaussian blur one more time, and just fade that together. So it's got a nice transition between those two colors. So that's gonna be the background. From here, let's go ahead and let's add some lights in the background here on the ceiling. So back up to our layers menu here. Let's make a new layer. Color palette, let's use that off-white color. I'm gonna switch my brush back to mono line now and we'll just make a oval here for the light. I'm gonna grab my arrow to transform this again, shrink it down, kind of get this here in the center. There we go. So there's one light, let's make a second one further in the background. So we're gonna duplicate that one the bottom one then, we'll move this down and back and then smaller. So it's kind of, it's getting just like the balls, getting smaller as we go back into the distance. Now we can go ahead and blur these. With that layer selected then, we're gonna go up to our adjustments menu again, Gaussian blur, slide this to, let's go about 12% on that one. And then selecting the other light, Adjustments, Gaussian Blur, we'll go about 9% on that one. So once again, we still have that depth of field back there working in the background as well. And that's pretty much it for that. Of course, now these balls look like they're kind of just floating out there. We've got some pretty believable 3D effects going on in here, but we need to continue that here on the table itself. So let's add some shadows do this, let's go up to our layers menu. 
I'm gonna go ahead now and combine all the background into one. So we've got four layers, balls on each layer, and then the background on another one. From here, let's make a new layer. I'm gonna come back to my color palette again, and let's go ahead and select this dark green color right here. And then once again, just an oval, hold them down to lock it in, drag and drop that. A nice shadow there, but I want to add a little bit more to it. So from here, let's go and choose this black color here. And then I'm going to go ahead and alpha lock this layer. So alpha lock, a little bit different than clipping mask. This allows us to draw on that layer without going outside. We're not on a separate layer. We're, we're still on that same layer. Well, let's go ahead and draw in shadow here and then coming back here i've also got a darker green here we'll pull in another green here now that that's done let's go ahead and go up to gaussian blur slide that so we've got a nice blur across there and then we're going to go ahead and go back to our layers again and turn off alpha lock so we want that off now we're going to blur the whole thing so adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur the whole shadow. All right. Back up here, now that we've got that shadow done, we can use that on these other ones as well. So if we slide this to the left and duplicate that, we can grab this shadow, pull it back here for the two. And then we can also duplicate it again and pull it back here. Oops, I was on the wrong one. Let's delete that. So let's duplicate this one and pull that one back for the three here. Once again, just resizing. And then we can also blur that more too. So adjustments, Gaussian blur again. Just blur it more since it's further back there as well. So the shadow and the blur, same kind of technique that we used for that shallow depth of field. All right, so we got the shadows in there. Last thing we need to do, pool table looks a little bland. This is where I was talking about earlier using one of my custom texture brushes. So we're gonna switch over now here to my texture pack. This is available for Procreate. I'll link that down in the description as well if you wanna check it out. It's available on Gumroad. I've got one in here that's a soft fabric that's gonna work fantastic for this. So we're gonna use that across here on the felt. Now with this, the felt, same thing as the balls with the shallow depth of field. As you move back, it's gonna blur more. And with the the texture on the felt, you're not even really gonna see it. So we really only have to do the texture here towards the front. So I'm gonna use this third green over here. We're gonna make a new layer on top of the background layer. With that soft fabric maxed out the size there, I'm gonna start to add in this texture across here. Like I said, just more down towards the bottom. And this is really subtle. I'm zoomed out enough here that you're not even gonna see it, but as I zoom in here, you can really pick up that texture and see the difference between the non-textured and the textured. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna pull a little bit more in over here. I'm gonna come back in with this darker green now. And with this, we can kind of bring in some more of the texture down here and also pull in a few more shadows to make this a little bit more believable. And obviously there's gonna be other balls here that we can't see that are gonna be giving off shadows. There's gonna be shadows casted from, you know, overhead lights and the stuff in the pool hall. So just bringing in that texture is really gonna make it pop and seem a lot more realistic. So there we go, there's the finished design tutorial on making a pretty realistic
pool hall design. So hopefully you guys liked today's tutorial. If you did, do me a favor, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Also, if you guys follow along with any of these tutorials and post your work online, which I encourage you to do if you're on Instagram or Twitter, definitely tag me at BJ Dell so I can check them out. I love seeing what you guys do. Also, I can be found online, bjdell.com. And that's it for today. So until next time, keep creating. Thank you.